Kong is the largest consumer of meat in the world. And so we think that by creating a new user experience at canteen camp campus canteens, we can encourage people to consume less meat. Um, so first step is to uh, talk to the providers to actually remove meat from some of the dishes. But part two, which is the more difficult part, is convincing users that they don't actually need as much meat. So um, one thing we're going to have at the canteens are these interactive screens. So right now, this is a static shot. But you can see that it's a piece of steak and some vegetables with um, information on how much protein and calories you can get from each meal. Basically, to show um, users that actually you don't need to eat steak to get protein, because that's the myth we kept hearing today, that you can actually eat vegetables and beans and get the same amount of protein. And we'll also show how like, if you order today's option instead of a meat option, you'll save 32 liters of water and how much, um, you know, 10 tons of carbon <laughs> emissions. Um, so that's part one. So imagine three or four of these screens in the canteen and they're just changing constantly to show you updated stuff. There's also video on how food is prepared. And then the second part is, we'll have a little performance of our two students who want to order some food. Hey, what should we eat? Yeah, so uh, what should we eat? Uh, oh, this restaurant is good. Uh, yeah, I see it's a uh, mushroom with blue tofu. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Seems delicious. Oh. See, no one cries, uh, just happy face. Uh. Yeah, seven people like it. Yeah, seven yeah. people. Uh. <laughs> well, it's very, this has a lot of protein, so the mushroom with blue tofu. Uh, yeah. Should we order it? Yes, of course. Yeah, maybe we have two noodles. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. So while they're waiting for their noodles to arrive, I'll explain briefly what they just did. So you can see that it's an app for iPads and iPhones, and there's specific nutritional information on that recipe, the ingredients that go into it. Um, and also reviews from other consumers that have eaten it. So, for example, if the vegetarian dish really tastes bad, you'll be able to see because people will have rated it poorly. But if it tastes good, like it gives incentive for food to continually taste good. Um, what do we have on the app that isn't here? Uh, what do we have on the app that isn't here? <laughs> <laughs> 20 canteens, yeah? Oh yeah, so it's not just one canteen, it's the whole campus. So for example, HKU, it's like, uh, Recipes, well, the, the menu's available for all, like Delifant, Starbucks, Maxims, all the different um, canteen restaurants on campus. So not just the main canteen. Yeah, and it's so to delivery. Yeah, it's a delivery system. And so you can plan whether or not you want to go to eat at that particular canteen after looking at the menu and the nutritional content and the special that they have for that day. Yeah. And then also, yeah, part three, which we don't have today, is getting vegetarian celebrities to come and eat at the canteen and email all the students and say, hey, Andy Lau's coming to the canteen on Friday. <laughs> we'll be there, you know, like yeah. that part. Wait till next April, Venus Williams. Venus Williams, yeah. <laughs> She's a vegan. That's it, Tara. Um, Yeah, so it's an independent provider. It is not provided by the restaurant because the idea is for it to be campus-wide, so it's not on their canteen to now create an app. But it's more of the university because I think, for example, the sustainability office has a responsibility <laughs> to create, you know, this reduces emissions. So, um, so they could do it in collaboration with both IT students, um, have students actually build the app collaboratively, and um, get volunteers to go take photos of it. Yeah, we work closely with our faculty, so we, what we might do is run it through a class, for example, in a computer science lab, and have some students, uh, you know, all work on it together, and that can count for the In USD, I realized that most of the meat dishes are actually cheaper than the vegetarian options. So why do you think students will just go for the veg options when the meat is cheaper, and in their sense, it's tastier? So why do you, how do you, what's the, how would you overcome that barrier? We're working with our peers to make sure, as our last group did, that the food is actually tasty. You know, we want to get away from that bland issue. We're increasing the variety of the vegetarian options available, and then we're providing more information about it. So it's a, it's kind of a multi-step, multi-task. But that's 
where these screens are meant to be educational, right? So on the one hand, taste, but taste is also part of what you're used to. You think something's tasty because you've had it for a while. So I think part of it is like creating this openness to exploring, getting nutrition from... Nutrition seems like a boring word, right? Like, but somehow making that fun and sexy and wanting people to eat veg options. What, just quickly, what we heard today was that there's not enough available. So yeah, people are not that finding that there's enough. That they just think that to be healthy, they need yeah, to eat meat. Exactly. That's great. Mm. Um, I would assume that the regular university student going to get a meal would want to get it uh, done with as quickly as possible. So, like, would you worry about the display maybe kind of being um, overly kind of informative in the sense that it might be overwhelming for the student, uh, or make the display? yeah, so, or make like the ordering uh, process a little bit more uh, difficult. <laughs> That's why we have it on the app as well, so that while they're in line waiting, they can just go be on their phone. They don't have to wait for that. Like if they know they want noodles, and it's just which kind of noodle, they can just do it all on their phone. Let's just see the answers to your conversation. So there's a few facts on the top, a few facts on the bottom, but this is changing. They can read it quickly, but the increasing levels of detail are available on the app. Maybe we can ask you, since you asked that question, how many do you think is too much? So right now we have mm. calories, protein, carbs, vitamins, whatever. If you're a student at, a, at the canteen, what, what's most important? So one thing that we learned today is people think protein needs to come from meat. So that's got to be on there. But in terms of fat, vitamins, all that stuff, like what would actually influence your decision? What would you want to know? I think most people try to like reduce the fats and increase protein. So like it's try to balance between those two. Calories. It's carbohydrates. Carbohydrates. Yeah. Well, the best option is put everything. everything. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, but if you have it on the app, you can have everything. Yeah, right? you can. But if you have it on the board, like where we ate lunch today, there were three boards, and each board had 15 items on it. Okay. So you can't have 15 items with that, right? That's why we're doing this, okay? You've got those boards with the simple menu and the price, but then up above, you've got this. Like in a museum. So that's like a special. Yeah. Like on the center wall. Yeah. Like it's separate. Yeah. Say three screens and the information is changing and people are interested. But for those who just want to zip in and zip out, it's all yeah. that you have to have that. In some cases, the delivery mechanism is already there. We noticed today that at the canteen, the menu was an on screen, but they weren't using it any differently than they would have. Like yeah, it was a screen, screen static. Yeah. Yeah. Like, do you like each day someone has to check the menu and to get information about how water later it's safe? Oh, it's a huge word. It's good, but you do it. We're providing one week's worth of menu information in advance. But not more than one week because no one plans to meal. You have further than that. But you'll know if you have this information on your app. If you have a class in this building and then you have to get over there at that time, where to go, what's on the menu. But also, you know, on campus, students who've been there for more than a year, they don't change that often. There'll be the one or two dishes per restaurant. So it's a lot of work at the start, but after that, I think maintaining it is actually doable. I wonder, is there any existing app that the university uses that you guys can leverage on? Because you have to build a separate app for this, and I I think it needs to be really attractive for me to download an app for a university canteen. The closest thing you can think of is open rights, but it serves a completely different function. Um, so it's similar in some ways where you can rate the food, but this is a lot more information with visual menus. Well, we think it's just creating a more informed consumer is good for everybody. And the students today kind of walk in blindly, they stand in line, it's not a very happy experience, it's not a very active experience. And we think that food is very important to students and they spend so much of their time, some of them would eat three meals a day on campus, so it's pretty important information, so mm. we hope that they would be willing to download it. Do they get some kind of reward from um, downloading the app or, uh, or actually choosing those options? Like, does, does anything incentivize them to do this? Because it's about s switching their behavior. It's look like a lot of new information and asking them to try something new. What What is the incentive for them? Maybe when they download, they get like a free cup of coffee or something, and they get Starbucks to buy into it. Starbucks does this a lot anyway, right? So maybe like for maybe they get one of those mugs. <laughs> <laughs> Davis will 
Because a lot of times, I think for many of the other projects as well, there's a social and versus the market um, motivation behind a lot of our actions. And I wonder which one, like, I think it's often useful to consider. I, I don't, yeah, I'm, it's, I'm just talking out loud, but often these two process, these two things are really motivating people when they make new actions or t make changes in their behavior. There's another element we haven't touched on, which is the competition teams kind of take whoever comes in, but if they're aware that students can choose much more actively and more sort of uh, with better information what's going on, it's one of the complaints as well as the vegetarian food isn't very tasty, so they will kind of have to rise to the occasion to make sure that it's good enough. Mm. Thank you.